This is Algebra Lesson 7-4, Division Properties of Exponents. Now you can use repeated multiplication to simplify some fractions. If you expand the numerator and the denominator using repeated multiplication, you can then cancel any like terms. For example, if I have 3 to the 8th divided by 3 to the 5th, 3 to the 8th means I have 8 3's on the top, 3 times 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 3, and 5 3's on the bottom, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now here, I could cancel. I have a 3 here, which would cancel with this 3 here. This one here cancels with this one here. This third one cancels with that third one. That fourth one cancels with that fourth one. Fifth one cancels with that one. Fifth one, and I'm left with 3 to the third. This illustration leads to yet another property of exponents. We have the zero property of exponents. We have the, ne the property of negative exponents. We have the property of um, a power multiplied by a power, and we have the property of a power raised to a power. So now we have dividing powers with the same base. So to divide powers with the same base, we simply subtract the exponents, because if you look at 3 to the 8th divided by 3 to the 5th, 8 minus 5 is 3. So algebraically, that means if I have a to the m divided by a to the n, since both of them have a base of a, I can just subtract the exponents. So a to the m minus n, as long as a is not equal to 0. And m and n are rational numbers. For example, 2 to the 7th divided by 2 to the 3rd is 2 to the 7 minus 3, which should be 2 to the 4th, not 7 to the 4th. That should be a 2. 2 to the 4th, which is 2401. x to the 8th divided by x squared is equal to x to the 6th. W to the 3 fourths divided by W to the 1 half means that's W to the 3 fourths minus 1 half, which would get a common denominator, which would be 3 fourths minus 2 fourths, which makes it W to the 1 fourth. And by the way, 2 to the 4th is not 2401. 2 to the 4th is 16. What happens when you get 7 instead of a 2? Change that in your notes, please. All right. So let's divide using some algebraic expressions. So if I have b to the 4th divided by b to the 9th, that becomes b to the 4 minus 9, which is b to the negative 5th, which becomes 1 over b to the positive 5th. Because remember, you're not simplified unless you have no negative exponents. Numbers can be negative all day long. Exponents cannot. When you have two sets of variables, you just have to pay attention to those as well. So I have a to the 2 minus 4, b to the 1 minus 3. Remember, if, an, if a variable doesn't have an exponent, the exponent is a 1. So this becomes not 2, a, a, a to the negative second, b to the negative second, which of course I need to change to be a positive. So that would be 1 over a squared b squared. Problem number three, x squared y to the negative first z to the fourth divided by x y to the fourth z to the negative third. I'm going to set this up and subtract all my exponents. So I have x to the two minus one, y to the negative one minus four, be very careful with your negative signs, z to the four minus a negative three, be very, very careful with all your negative signs. So x to the 2 minus 1 becomes x to the first. y to the negative 1 minus 4 becomes y to the negative fifth. And z to the 4 minus a minus 3 becomes z to the 4 plus 3, or z to the 7. The x is taken to a positive exponent. The z is taken to a positive exponent. The only one that's not taken to a positive exponent is the y. Remember that any number can be written as a fraction over 1. So we need to move the y to the negative 5 to the denominator. So the x stays on the top, and you can either have it as x or x to the first. z to the seventh stays on the top, and the y goes to the bottom and becomes positive, so it becomes over y to the fifth. Now, when you divide numbers that are in scientific notation, you can use the property of dividing powers with the same base. In real-world situations, decide whether to write the result as a st in standard form or in scientific notation. Whichever one makes most sense, unless you're told to do a specific form. So, if I have a small dog, and his heart beats about 64 million times in one year, if there are about 530,000 minutes in a year, what is the dog's average heart rate in beats per minute? Okay, so let's do some transposing here. 64 million...
means 64 followed by six zeros, which we could write in scientific notation as 6.4 times 10 to the seventh power. Because remember, my decimal point would be here. If I moved it between the six and the four, I moved it seven places to the left. I took a big number and made it smaller, so my exponent is positive. 536,000 minutes, 530,000, excuse me, 530 comma zero, 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 which in scientific notation is 5.3 times 10 to the fifth. So, if, I, if my little doggy, if his heart beats 6.4 times 10 to the seventh beats in one year, and there are 530,000 minutes in a year to get my years to cancel out. My one year has to be here at the top. My 530,000, or 5.3 times 10 to the fifth uh, minutes, has to be on the bottom. So now my years have canceled out, and my answer will be in beats per minute. So I simply need to divide 6.4 times 10 to the seventh by 5.3 times 10 to the fifth. So I'm going to do those a little separately, times 10 to the 7 minus 5. So I'm going to take 6.4 and divide it by 5.3, and it's going to be an obnoxiously long number. Okay. So this comes out, 6.4 divided by 1 point, or 5.3 comes out, comes out to be about 1.20754. So we're going to round that to like 1.2, because that's a whole lot easier to deal with, times 10 to the second power, because 7 minus 5 is 2. Now, it would be a whole lot easier to uh, give me this answer in, in standard form. So if I move the decimal point two places to the, to the right, it's about 120 beats per minute. So my little doggy's heart beats about 120 beats in one minute. Okay. Now, we can use multiplication, repeated multiplication to simplify an expression where you have to, ex where you have to distribute the exponent as well. X divided by Y all to the third means X over Y times X over Y times X over Y which is the same as saying x times x times x, divided by y times y times y, which means x to the third and y to the third. Which means just like when we raise a product to a power, when you raise a quotient to a power, you have to distribute that exponent to everything. So to raise a quotient to a power, raise the numerator and the denominator to the power, and then simplify. <coughs> Excuse me. So a divided by b to the nth power becomes a to the n over b to the n, provided that a and b are not zero, and n is a rational number. And if we have three-fifths to the third power, that becomes three to the third over five to the third, which simplified would be three times three times three, which is 27, and five times five times five, which is 125. Okay, so you can clearly see you need to distribute that exponent all the way through both the numerator and the denominator. So... If I have a quotient and I'm going to raise it to a power, I need to make sure I distribute. So this square is going to go here, and it's also going to go here. So that gives me 3 squared over x squared squared. That's basically what it's saying. Well, 3 squared is 9. A power raised to a power is multiplied, so x to the 2 times 2 is 4. So 9 over x to the 4th. Problem number six here, if I distribute that cube, I get x cubed over y squared quantity cubed, which is x to the third divided by y to the sixth, because a power raised to a power is multiplied. And last but not least, if we have t to the seventh divided by t to the two to the third, and we take that quantity and square it, that becomes t to the seventh times squared squared over 2 to the third squared. 
So it's t to the 7 times 2, so that's t to the 14th power. 2 to the 3 times 2, so that's 2 to the 6th power. And 2 to the 6th is not a ridiculously large number, because 2 to the 3rd is 8, and 2 to the 3rd is 8, and 8 times 8 is 64, so this would be t to the 14th divided by 64. Now let's take a look at what happens when we have something and we take it to a negative exponent. If I have a divided by b and I take it to the negative n power, by the very first property of exponents we learned, which is the property of negative exponents, that would become 1 over a over b to the nth power, which when we distribute the n would be 1 over a to the n divided by b to the n. If you remember, this fraction bar right here means division. So basically this is 1 divided by a to the n over b to the n. Well, when you divide, you multiply by the reciprocal. So 1 divided by a to the n over b to the n becomes 1 times b to the n over a to the n, which, when we distribute that, becomes b over a to the nth power, which leads us directly to, if I have a divided by b and I take that to the negative nth power, that's the same as saying b over a to the positive n power. Notice how everything changed positions except for the n and change signs. A moved to the denominator, B moved to the numerator, and the N became positive. So, let's simplify. If I have 3 fourths to the negative third, by the property we just did, that means it's the same thing as saying 4 thirds to the positive third power. So that would be 4 to the third over 3 to the third. 4 to the third is 64 and 3 to the third is 27, and in this chapter we're going to leave things like this. Do not change it to a mixed number, because it's going to look really weird, especially with variables. So leave it as an improper fraction. That's the best way to do it. Number 9, if I have negative 1 half to the negative fifth power, that becomes negative 2 over 1 to the positive, or to, to the positive fifth power. So that becomes negative 2 to the fifth divided by 1 to the fifth. Well, anything, 1 to any power is still 1, so it just becomes 2 to the negative 2 to the fifth power. Since it's an odd number of exponents, I'm going to have an odd number of negative signs, so my answer is going to be negative, and 2 to the fifth happens to be 32, so this is negative 32. All right, there's, remember, there's a big difference between negative 2 to the fifth and the opposite of 2 to the fifth. This is asking me to take negative 2 to the fifth. Number 10, 2r divided by s all to the negative first power. So that's going to be s divided by 2r, and we're going to take that to the first power. So that becomes s to the first over 2 to the first, r to the first. So that just becomes s over 2r. And make sure your s's do not look like 5s. It's a little easier said than done, especially for me. And number 11, 7a divided by m to the negative second power becomes m over 7a all to the second power, which is m to the second over 7 to the second, a to the second, because you have to distribute that too. So that becomes m to the second, 7 squared is 49a squared. So m to the second divided by 49a squared. So that's pretty much division. It's just using a lot of your multiplication skills and remembering some things like multiplying by reciprocals. So, close your question for today. If you could not remember the property for the power of a quotient, how could you find the simplified form? And you should be able to do that because I showed you that in the very first step. So if you could not remember the property for the power of a quotient, how could you find the simplified form?